Do you not have the perceptive ability to understand that every time there's close to their little narrative falling apart, they switch the narrative? Mm -hmm. Like when COVID was clearly coming out to be fucking bullshit and the vaccines were clearly coming out to be bullshit and there was like all this public pressure and all this boiling up backlash, all of a sudden, Ukraine, mm -hmm. okay? And it started all over again. And then they got people all hyped about that. Ukraine went on for a hundred billion plus dollars and two years, all right? And people are now getting to the point where they're fucking done with Ukraine. Boom, Israel Hamas, right? And by the way, Netanyahu had was about to get fucking tossed out of office by his own people. Now everybody's behind him. Like we have to get smarter. Every time we start to get close to accountability, they switch the narrative and pull the switch to run the same play on emotional manipulation and everybody gets fired up. If we don't get smarter, these people will continue to rule over us. And not only that, they're gonna kill us eventually because they don't want us here. What is up guys, it's Andy Purcell and this is the show for the realists say goodbye to the lies, the fakeness and delusions of modern society and welcome to motherfucking reality guys. Today we have Andy and DJ cruise the motherfucking internet. That's what we're going to do. That's what CTI stands for. If you hadn't figured it out, it means cruise the internet. This is where we put up topics on the screen. We speculate on what the truth is, what may not be true. And then we talk about how we, the people can actually work to solve some of these problems. Other times we have Q and AF. That's where you submit questions and we answer them. For those of you that don't know, this is an entrepreneur, personal development, success based podcast and it always has been so we want you guys to ask your questions about how to get better and then we want to help you get better by answering them on the show so uh you could submit your questions a couple different ways the first way is guys you can email those questions in to ask andy at andy or you can go on youtube under the q and af episodes which typically air on mondays and you can drop your question in the comments and we'll pick some from there as well the questions could be about anything, okay? I know this is a business, personal development, entrepreneurship, success-based show, but we also try to cover some of the things going on in the world in that show sometimes as well. So whatever you got, send it our way. Uh, real talk. Real talk is five to 20 minutes of me giving you some real talk. Full length is what you see on most other podcasts where we just have a guest sit in here and we have a conversation. And then we have 75 hard verses. 75 hard verses where somebody who has completed 75 hard and changed their life comes in and talks about how they were before, how they are after, and uh, how you can take you from where you are now and become what it is you're trying to be by fixing some basic things uh, like developing mental toughness, grit, confidence, fortitude, uh, the ability to persevere. And uh, you could show and teach yourself how to adhere through the process of discipline to any plan that you lay out. And that's what we cover on that. Uh, and we have this thing. So like, you know, uh, we like to say here on the show, it's uh, don't be a hoe. Share the show. All right. What's lots of on? big, lots of big announcements for you guys coming up. Uh, we have lots of big projects that I've been working on. Uh, and we've been working on as a team for literally the last two and a half years. So um, the new book, there's a number of new books. There's not just one. There's five new books that are going to be launching. Um, two new YouTube concepts, uh, some other things, a big project. You know, you guys like to, you guys like to ask me about where to get this hat and what it means and what it stands for. That question will be answered for you guys pretty soon. So we have a lot of stuff, uh, coming out. So keep an eye out and we'll let you guys know as it comes. Yeah. You know, that, that's one thing that I think most people, um, aren't really aware of the amount of attention to detail that you put in and any, anything you, you do, you know, but it's about just holding that standard, man. And it's like, yeah. you know, when you deliver something, it's going to be fucking perfect. Yeah. You, you know, only have, you know, you, you've got your reputation. Shot. That's yeah. it, man. Yeah. And uh, I don't like if I have to disappoint people by holding things off or, or making them be better. That's what I do. It's, uh, you know, in the beginning, when you're just getting started, you kind of got to launch and you got to do shit. Uh, but with the audience that we have and, and the amount of time I've been doing this, I have enough credibility with everybody that people know that if I hold it back, there's a reason why. Yeah. So it is what it is. Yeah, I'm excited, man. A lot of cool projects, man. Yeah. A lot of cool projects. But um, at CTI, yeah, we got a lot of interesting stuff going on, a lot of updates for you guys. Um, but I wanted to jump into something first before we get to our main headlines. Uh, do you remember this guy, Senator Menendez? Oh, yeah. Oh, Bob. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, he just got charged <laughs> with acting as a foreign agent. It's official now. 
Uh, this is the guy with the gold bars. Gold and, bars, yeah. all the cash. He stuffed in envelopes inside uh -huh. his you know leather, Leatherman's jacket from that uh, home run. The ball still falling. Mm. Yeah, yeah. This guy. Yeah. So um, while all of this stuff's going on around the world, it's important, guys, that you guys just take a second to look at what other things are happening. And this, I thought, this was uh, an interesting thing that came up, especially with the countries that are you know tied into this. Right. I think there's some interesting connections that have not been made yet. Time will only tell, but let's dive into this just a little bit. Um, so Senator Bob Menendez, who's a Democrat out of New Jersey, uh, was hit with a new felony charge on Thursday as a federal grand jury returned a superseding indictment that included an additional count of allegedly acting as a foreign agent. Menendez, his wife, and one of the businessmen involved in the alleged bribery scheme, quote, willfully and knowingly combined, conspired, confederated, and agreed together and with each other to have Menendez act as an agent of the Egyptian government, the indictment said. Uh, prosecutors allege that Menendez, quote, provided sensitive U.S. government information and took other steps that secretly aided the government of Egypt. Now, the original indictment against Menendez, his wife and three businessmen uh, was unsealed last month and alleged that he and his wife had a corrupt relationship with New Jersey businessmen, while Hanna, Jose Uribe and Fred Davies, uh, who allegedly gave the senator bribes worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, according to the DOJ, the bribes were intended to protect the businessmen um, and to benefit uh, Egypt. Quote, those bribes included cash, gold, payments toward a home mortgage, compensation for a low or no show job, a luxury vehicle and other things of value. The indictment said federal authorities reportedly found gold bars and cash stuffed throughout the senator's home um, that were traced back to the businessman Menendez allegedly worked with. Um any update on this? Because we, I know we covered this a couple of weeks ago, man. But it's not surprising at this point, right? I mean, when are they going to do Joe Biden? <laughs> well, I got that coming up later. Okay. Well, I mean, that's <laughs> the question I see. Okay, let's go after these low-level guys. Let's right. let's hold them accountable to things that everybody's doing. Because here's how I read this situation. I read this situation as this guy, because this is a club, and mm -hmm. this is a club that they're in that we're not. And just like George Carlin likes to say, yeah. okay, or like to say when he was alive, yeah. uh, they're in a club and we ain't in it, and that's reality. And for someone to get expelled from the club, they usually have to do something that disrupts something else or some sort of business that's happening for the other members of the club. Yeah. And so- We're not doing something. Yeah, he did yeah. something to piss yeah. everybody off, yeah. okay? Because all of these people do this, and this is what people have to understand. Every single person in our government, with the exception of very few people, very few people are on the take. Mm. All right. That is the system that has been uh, created over the course of time. When we first started our country, I'm sure there was a genuine care for the country. I'm sure there were people who were serving. I'm sure there were people who actually went into government with the idea of, I want what's best for America. Mm -hmm. But over the course of the last 240 plus years, that's eroded and we've gotten corruption. And we have this situation now where almost all the members of our government, with the exception of very few, are on the take in one form or another. And the structure of how you must run to even get into office almost creates this system of corruption because they have to go out and they have to raise money to run ads. And the money to run ads costs a lot of money. And so they can only go out and procure one or two of these big donors to run their ads for them, which could sometimes cost tens, hundreds of millions of dollars. And in the case of like big time presidential rate, you know, it could be billions, yeah. right? So we have a system that doesn't work because it's predicated upon the idea that we have to have a whole ton of money to get our name out, to get into office. And so if we want corruption to end, we have to stop the process of them being able to raise money to run ads. What if all the politicians, all of them, could not actually run political ads? They couldn't run ads on TV. They couldn't run ads on radio. They couldn't run ads in print. And they had to actually go out and campaign and figure out how to get their name out there. Grassroots. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So th that would change things because we would make it illegal for them to raise money. Now, when they get in there, they're not beholden to these people. And what ha a lot of people don't understand how this works. You know, these big pharma companies have so much money 
because they it's like this big chicken or the egg what puzzle first, here, yeah, right yeah. the 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 pharma companies have become so powerful that they donate to all the political campaigns now they donate in big sums to the political campaigns so when they when these people get into office they understand if I'm going to run again and I'm going to become a congressman or a senator again I'm going to continue to need that money because I was only able to get it from these one or two guys, right? So over the course of their making laws and their their votes, they're always at that is always at the forefront of their mind. They're like, okay, I can't vote this way because this will piss off this donor, or I can't vote that way because this will piss off this donor. And what ends up happening is we have a government that does not operate in the interest of us, but operates in the interest of these big giant companies. And that's what people are failing to understand. These people make so much money because they own the government who does not make any laws to regulate them so they can continue to make more money so that they continue to donate to these political campaigns. And so it creates this big cycle of decisions that are not in our interest. And I would assume that this guy here did something to piss everybody off. Yeah. Okay. And when we take that a step further to like what Biden's been accused of doing, we're talking about actual countries paying him and his family right. for policy decisions. All right. Not that is treason. Yeah, yeah. That is treason, dude. So we have a corrupt system that has to be cleaned up. You know, and the reason it doesn't get cleaned up is because the people who are in charge of cleaning it up, it, th these decisions are not in their personal financial interests. Mm -hmm. So how can we expect the government to clean itself up when they're all getting rich off the policy decisions that they make? It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. The only way it's going to happen is if people demand it. And I mean everybody. And this is what I talk about, what I talked about on, on the last show, uh, and I've talked about consistently for years and years and years. You know, our division is their strength. Our unity is our strength, okay? And until we figure out that our unity is the only thing that's going to solve this corruption problem at scale, we're going to continue to get f***ed over by these people. Yeah, That's why they push these narratives down the pipe, which I'm sure we'll talk a lot about on the show. But the point is, you know, this guy violated the unspoken rules of the club, and now he's going to prison probably or whatever, right? Yeah. That's how they do it. He's going to have to abide by some other rules in there. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> these people are shitbags, bro. Yeah. The minute the minute you step outside the line, they weaponize every resource they have against you. Yep. And this is why so many of you guys are afraid to speak up. This is why so many people keep quiet. You know, this is why whenever you guys share some of my stuff, you say stuff like this. Love them and hate them, bro. Love them or hate them, that's some weak shit. Like that shows, what, what does that say to people? That says, I don't really know if I stand with this. Love them or hate them, uh, he makes some good points. No, motherfucker, they're great points. Otherwise, you wouldn't be wanting to share them. But the fact that you're not willing to stand on those things and not willing to say, this is what I believe and this is what I stand for, is the difference between these people continuing to fucking do what they do to us and us getting our power back. Mm -hmm. Like, you have every right to have an opinion. You have every right to have a stance. And not only is it a right to have an opinion or a stance, you have an obligation to voice those. And they've continued to push down this narrative that... You know, the silent majority or being quiet or minding your business when it comes to politics is somehow a virtuous thing. Why do you think they teach you when you're a kid? Well, it's, it's, it's rude to talk about politics because they don't want people talking about it. Right. They don't want people having discussions because the more discussions people have, the more fuckery becomes obvious to everybody around them. And what do they and what do they want you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Well, like, they want you talking about Kim Kardashian, bro. Right. They want right. you talking about the the flavor of the day, whatever the fuck it is. Whatever they're feeding you on the news, that's what they want you to talk about. Mm -hmm. Yep. But the point is, is like, dude, until you guys wake up and start to become like real Americans again and understand your duty, that your duty is to stand up and have an opinion and speak up, we're going to continue to fail. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue to be ruled over by a bunch of tyrants that, that do not have our interests in mind. And not only do they not have our interests in mind, they have zero problem f***ing us over to get whatever it is they want. Yeah, it's very evident, man. You know, stop uh, apologizing for your viewpoints. Yeah, it's real shit, man. <clears throat> yeah, I thought I'd just bring that up. Interesting topic there, but... uh. We do got some really, really good stuff down the pipeline, so let's get into it. Guys, remember, if you want to see any of these pictures, articles, links, videos, go to andyforsella.com. You can find them linked there. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, check down in the description below, and you can find these articles linked there as well. Uh, so with that being said, headline number one. Let's get into it. Headline number one reads, 
Netanyahu says Hamas is ISIS as Israel prepares for ground invasion of Gaza. All right, so uh, I guess part two of this uh, developing situation we got going on over in the Middle East. Uh, So fast facts, let's dive into it. So Israel has declared war against Hamas after the terrorist group infiltrated the country on Saturday, firing thousands of rockets at residential areas and butchering civilians. Um, At least 2,400 people have been killed in the war, including more than 1,200 people in Israel and at least 25 Americans. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Monday, Israel is in a, quote, a war to ensure our existence against, quote, savages who celebrated the murder of women, children and elderly. Uh, The attack was carried out over the weekend on the holiday of Simchat Torah. Um, According to Israelis reports, around 1,500 Hamas terrorists were killed in Israel. They estimate that hundreds of militants are among dead in Gaza. Um, now, let's dive into a, a lot of these things that's going on in the, in the world, right? Um, so I'm sure a lot of people have been seeing you know, headlines like this. Report, Hamas left knives inside of Israeli children murdered in front of parents, right? Or headlines like this. Uh, this headline reads, at least 40 babies, some beheaded, found by Israel soldiers in Hamas attacked village, right? We even had the president... Mr. Shits and Pants uh, come out on the uh, interweb, right? Uh, and he made this statement here. Let's watch this. I mean, I, I, I've been doing this a long time. I never really thought that I would see and have confirmed pictures of terrorists beheading children. I never thought I'd ever... Anyway, I... Uh, but there are countries in the region that are trying to be of some help, including Arab nations that are trying to be of some help. So, uh, anyway. Okay. Very confident statement. There. Super confident. Yeah. All right. Now, here's the thing. So, you make that statement, right? And you got influencers. Everybody was, like, I mean, everybody was jumping on this topic. You talk about beheading babies, man. Like, that's some yeah, it's deep, upsetting. Some real stuff. Yeah, right? it's going to upset anybody. It wouldn't, it would create some type of emotional response. It's going to upset anybody. Anybody with a heart that would have. You hear that, bro? Yes. It's, it's over. Yes. Right? Okay, well, there's a small little problem, though. Yeah, I know. Small little problem. All right. Uh, This headline reads, IDF says it won't back up its claim that Hamas decapitated babies in Israel because it is disrespectful for the dead. Right. Even CNN. This headline reads, Israeli official says government cannot confirm babies were beheaded in Hamas attack. Right. Well, how about this? White House. Biden has not seen or independently confirmed Hamas beheading Israeli children. Uh, The White House clarifies that President Joe Biden and other U.S. officials have not seen or independently confirmed that Hamas terrorists beheaded Israeli children. Very contrary to the video we just saw, right? Where he says, I've got confirmed photos. I've seen confirmed photos of kids with their heads cut off is what he said. What our president of the United States said. That's what he said. Right. Now they're walking back these claims. Even Hamas comes out and issues a statement. Right. Uh, Completely rejecting this claim. Uh, saying, quote, we categorically affirm the falsehood of the fabricated allegations promoted by some Western media outlets, the latest of which was the claim of killing children, beheading them and targeting civilians. Hamas spokesperson Azat al Rashik said in the statement published on the group's website. Well, let's let's be clear. They are targeting civilians. OK, we're going to be fair both ways. Yeah, for sure. When you can fly in and you shoot 200 something people at a fucking concert, that's civilians, asshole. Okay, so I'm not going to play into either side. I'm not picking a side here, bro. Yeah. I'm going to call it both ways. That's a fucking lie. And apparently, the baby's being beheaded is a lie. Now, I'll let you continue. Yeah, that. It leads to something, right? So, I mean, there there is a name for this type of- Yeah, it's called atrocity propaganda. Atrocity propaganda. Yeah, I already Absolutely. know that. Yeah, um, but people don't. Yeah, we got to dive into it. Yeah, we got to dive into it. So, so this uh, the definition of atrocity propaganda, if you guys have not heard of it yet- Um, Just listen to this. Atrocity propaganda is the spreading of information about the crimes committed by an enemy, which can be factual, but often includes or features deliberate fabrications or exaggerations. This can involve photographs, videos, illustrations, interviews and other forms of information presentation or reporting. Now, this is not a new topic or a new theme. Well, no. Do you would you like me to point some of these out? 
Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, how about the footage that came out of China when COVID was announced where people were falling over dead in the street? Bodies just collapsing. Like people just collapsing in yeah. the street, okay? Body about, bags, a trailer. about that? Yeah, right. And how about the mass graves that they were pretending to dig in, in New York in the yeah. parks? How about, how about the, uh, the ghost of Kiev mm. and all these crazy war stories when Ukraine popped out? Okay? These are, this is called atrocity propaganda. And the point of the propaganda is to be so atrocious that if you are to ask to see proof of it, you are considered a disgusting human being. Right. Right. For me to say, well, look, that sounds horrible that they're cutting these babies' heads off. And by, by the way, that does sound horrible. Sound, it it is, makes me it is a sick. terrible thing. Yes. And for me to even ask that, and for me to say, hey, I would like to see pictures of that. Like, think of how that makes someone appear to be. Right. It's so horrible that you cannot you even see ask pictures, of, pictures of it. Right. Yeah. It's no different than when George Floyd happened and the the cop was on the dude's back and you said, well, actually, he's not blocking the guy's airway and it shows in the coroner report that he actually died of fentanyl and people still can freak out. Like, bro, right. these are the things that they are designed to whip people into mob mentality so that whatever they are trying to do is bought into by the public. 100%. All right? And it's funny you say that, man, because, guys, let's take a little history tour. We go back to April 6th of 1917. The United States, you know, you guys remember the disinformation committee that we had? Yeah, yeah before you get into this, I don't know if you know this, and I don't know if you, you might have this in your notes. But you know that like this is that baby shit yeah. is the same shit they did in the beginning of of uh, Desert Storm in Iraq. Yeah, same thing they did in Germany too. Okay, well keep going because you're on the right track of what. <laughs> oh, what, I yeah. got you, man. It's the same. It's it's the same narrative. It's the same thing because they understand that gets people to buy in. Yeah, one hundred percent. But yeah, so back in everybody's against that. Every, they they take the most heinous yes. possible things to to sway public morale. Yes. right. Um, so they started this. So, so and this is a real thing, guys. You can go uh, on archives.gov, right? The Committee on Public Information. This was the first time in the United States that we created our own propaganda, actual, like an actual committee that was designed and formed to liter literally create these types of propaganda, right? Um, and they're the ones that started putting pictures out like this, right? Claiming these you know, German Nazi soldiers were bayonetting children Right? None of which were happening. And by the way, the internet didn't exist then. Right. So this is so so, so there's no way to debunk food. these things. Imagine you are a person living with no internet. The only form of news that you had are the art the, the newspapers that are coming across right. that you'll get every week or so updated, right? Or you know, radio broadcasts. You had no way to verify anything. What they told you was the truth. It was so much easier to get people to buy along with certain. Yeah, narratives. and they're still operating along that line. They still think that they can whip people up and lie to them, mm -hmm. right? And they're doing it through the internet. But the problem is, it only lasts for like two or three days. But here's the problem: once people start believing the shit, they buy into it with their identity. We've seen this over and over and over again. We saw it with COVID. We saw it with Black Lives Matter. We saw it with the vaccine. We saw it with Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing it with the Israel uh, Hamas conflict. Okay. We can go down the list, right? But here's the thing people read this, sh like they see this, this footage of people falling over in the streets with COVID, right? And they automatically make up their mind. It's, it's, it, that's real. This is real. Holy shit. I'm going to die. Okay. And we still see the effects of this even today, like people who are still afraid to go outside without a mask. So this is very psychologically traumatizing to anybody who is not aware enough to understand that what they're looking at is actually manipulation propaganda. Yeah. All right. So um, and if we go down the line, we could say this with Black Lives Matter. Right. How many people for a year wouldn't believe that Black Lives Matter was a fucking scam? Right. Right. Until the people started getting busted, you know, like, bro, if you talk to a black person who had bought into Black Lives Matter, they'd mother you up and down, bro. Mm -hmm. You're a fucking racist piece of shit, bro. I'm pointing out where the money's going. Right. It's not going to you. It's going to these white dudes over here that are taking advantage of you, right? Yeah. But they're mad at you for pointing it out. Same thing with the vaccine. Like, how many people have fallen over fucking dead from the vaccine and still when you point it out, it's inappropriate to talk about? Well, the reason it's inappropriate to talk about is because these people have created that as part of their identity. 
All right. Same thing with Ukraine. Everybody posts the Ukrainian flag. Everybody's talking about Snake Island and the ghost of Kiev and all this shit and saying that Ukraine's winning the war. And all of a sudden, they're not, and nobody can admit they got played. And this is no different than what's going on here. It's the same thing over and over and over again. And by the way, I would like to point this out as well. Do you not under, do, do you guys not realize or see or observe, like, do you not have the perceptive ability to understand that every time there's close to their little narrative falling apart, they switch the narrative. Mm -hmm. Like when COVID was clearly coming out to be fucking bullshit and the vaccines were clearly coming out to be bullshit. And there was like all this public pressure and all this boiling up backlash all of a sudden Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it started all over again. All right. And then they got people all hyped about that. Ukraine went on for a hundred billion plus dollars and two years. All right. And people are now getting to the point where they're fucking done with Ukraine. Okay. Because our economy's fucked up. Tanked. You know, our, our, the, all the problems we have here, people are pissed, right? Boom. Israel Hamas, right? And by the way, Netanyahu had, was about to get fucking tossed out of office by his own people. Now everybody's behind him. Like we have to get smarter. Yeah. Every time we start to get close to accountability, they switch the narrative and pull the switch to run the same play on emotional manipulation and everybody gets fired up. And by the way, I'm an asshole for pointing it out the whole time. You know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't yeah. even make sense. No. Like, dude, if we don't get smarter, these people will continue to rule over us. And not only that, they're going to kill us eventually because they don't want us here. Yeah. These people do not like us. They, they hate us. All right. They're willing to kill their own people in order to stay in power like over and over and over again throughout history anyway yeah no it's real shit um one other thing too i want to point out real quick when it comes to this atrocity propaganda so paul Linebarger, um he's a historian uh wrote this piece about atrocity propaganda and i thought one thing that i, I thought was really really interesting is is uh in one of his publications he says atrocity propaganda leads to real atrocities as it incites the enemy into committing more atrocities and by heating up passions, it increases the chances of one's own side committing atrocities in revenge for the ones reported in propaganda. Like we talk about psychological warfare, right? This is probably like one of the, the wildest things that they could possibly use. And the problem is the danger is it works every single time. Every single time. Um, you know, and he also points out atrocity propaganda might also lead to uh, lead the public to mistrust reports of actual atrocities. It's the boy who cried wolf. We talked about that all the time, guys. Mm. Um, so it's just interesting. I thought that was important we bring this up. A couple of other things with going on. Um, well, he makes a good point there because let's be real. You know, when they start talking about 40 baby heads being cut off, now you have like so much of the internet legitimately calling for for the total destruction of Palestinians, not separating the difference between Hamas and the Palestinians. Right. 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 Like this would be no different than than some atrocity propaganda being put out against Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. And then the backlash being so strong that everybody's like fucking kill all the black people. Well, you know why they can't separate Palestinians from Hamas? It's the same reason they can't separate Jewish people from Zionist. Well, you can't know, have that conversation. Yeah. Well, look, dude, I'm just saying, let's talk about something that we understand. All right. Here, this would be the parallel that you would draw here would be Black Lives Matter can does some bad shit. Right. Mm -hmm. And so in response, let's say Black Lives Matter kills uh, you know, let's just say they kill 40 babies and it's atrocity propaganda and, and they make it's made up. OK, and what that actually results in is a massacre of all kinds of innocent black people here in America based off of some lies that somebody made because they're trying to produce, uh, push an agenda. And that's the danger of how this happens. And that, that is actually happening in, in, in Palestine right now. And it is Israel. We have Israeli forces and we have tons and tons and tons of influencers on the Internet saying, wipe them out, level them. Blah, 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 not differentiating the difference between Hamas and regular innocent Palestinian people. Right. Okay. Like there's no kids over there. Yeah, bro. And they don't care. 
because these people are so riled up over the 40 babies getting killed that didn't actually fucking happen, apparently, Allegedly. right? There's no proof of it, all right? That they're, they're saying, fuck it, we'll kill all their people and their families and shit. It's, it's, a, it's an actual justification for a true genocide. Mm -hmm. And like, there's a lot of people who are not stopping to think like, damn, man, like, yeah, that's some terrorist shit. But this isn't this whole entire population of people, no. right? And dude, let's be real. What's going on between these two cultures? It, this is not going to be solved. Like no. this, the, America's not going to solve this. The only thing that's going to solve it is them fighting the fuck out until one of them's done. Yeah, that and hopefully drink a beer afterwards. Well, I don't think there's going to be anybody left because they're they're intent on destroying each other completely. Yeah. And if that's the case, this will lead into a real world war conflict. And you, you personally here in the united states will likely be fighting here on this soil in the next 14 months i think there's a real possibility of that oh, yeah. if we get involved in this conflict and hamas already has terror cells and here's another thing let's let's fucking, let's work this out this is something i've been thinking about the progressive left mm -hmm. is holding pro-palestine pro-hamas rallies all over the country yeah okay Who's in the progressive left? It's usually far left communist socialists, okay, which by the way, Muslims hate, mm -hmm. all right? And by the way, Hamas really hates. Mm -hmm. And you know who else it is? It's the LGBTQ community, yeah. okay, who Hamas fucking hates, <laughs> okay? So let, hold on, I wanna, I wanna unpack this so people really understand what we're dealing with here, yeah. all right? Now I say useful idiots a lot, but this will show you what I'm talking about. All right. So we have Donald Trump in office who love him or hate him, like his tweets, not like his tweets, whatever. All of you guys on the progressive left, you could say F Donald Trump's tweets. He's a piece of shit. That's fine. Here's the reality. You were safe. You were legitimately safe in this country. You were not being attacked. You were not being terrorized. Now you say you were because people were calling you names or something. I'm talking about actual killing or harming of you yeah. all right we're not talking about uh words we're talking about sticks and stones attacks <laughs> okay so donald trump's in office you guys are safe mm -hmm. now you guys can call donald trump racist you call everybody like me pro 2a regular type americans bigots and racists and all this shit for a decade for a decade you've been doing that all right now you voted in this man joe biden who is bought and paid for, and in my opinion, in place to legitimately destroy and demoralize and, de and destabilize our country. Because every single thing he's done has done that. He's being paid by other governments, allegedly. And what do you think he's being paid to do? He's not being paid to make our shit stronger. He ain't getting paid to eat ice cream. All right. <laughs> so you guys vote this guy in who is the alternative of this guy that you just don't like his words. And then this guy sends money to Iran, all right, who funds Hamas. They also leave all our military equipment in Afghanistan, and that a lot of that military equipment is in the hands of Hamas, all right? Then they leave the border open for the last three years where 10 plus million migrants, not, not uh, you know, uh, I don't know, what, what, what do they call them? Refugees, they're not refugees. Asylum seekers. These are not asylum seekers. Where are they seeking asylum from? Right. These are people that are illegally here, coming here. We're in, we're being invaded. And you guys, you know, you're bleeding hearts. You beat for those people, right? All the while, some 75 to 100,000 of these Hamas people who fucking hate gay people and hate communists and hate progressivism because of the, it's, it's destruction on the culture of the world in their opinion, mm -hmm. okay? And so now you have a scenario where... This man you voted for has actually legitimately put you directly in harm's way because when these terror attacks start here in the United States, who do you think they're going to target? They're going to target the people that they hate the most and they don't hate the regular American the most. They say that shit, but that's not who they hate. They hate the progressive ideology that goes against traditional culture the most. They hate this this uh gender ideology they hate homosexuality they hate communists okay 
who is going to come to defend you? Oh, that's right. It's going to be the same people that you called a bigot and a racist and a piece of shit and a colonizer, right? Yep. So, so that's the situation we're dealing with. And these people are so fucking stupid that they don't understand that when they hold these rallies and support Hamas, that Hamas is in their fucking neighborhood right now planning attacks on their shit right now. Like... <laughs> Make it make sense. Maybe. No, it doesn't make sense. And these people, this is what I'm talking about when I say useful idiots. Yeah. When I say like, this is how they make the play work. Like, bro, there's a big section of people here that are so stupid and are used so hard that they are literally tricked into supporting their own demise potentially. And, and you guys might want to think about calling all these pro 2A people racist and bigots right now because real talk, if that shit cracks off here, they're the only chance you got because they'll kill you, dude. Yeah. And just like they're over there pissing on bodies, they'll be pissing on your body. That's real, man. That's real. You, you can stand there with the fucking Palestine flag all you want, bro, and say you support them. They don't give a fuck. They don't, they don't think like you. We've lived so long in a soft culture here in America that people can't fathom that people are willing to kill you for a different ideology. That's that's the that's the like the ultimate like what the fuck, right? Like that's like we live in this country that is so free that you have to pretend to be actually in danger and oppressed to the point where then it becomes a country where you're actually in danger. <laughs> Man, listen. That's rough. That's I'm just rough. saying. That's rough, man. You guys might want to rethink who the fuck you're... What I've been saying... Let's do it America, man. I've been saying this for fucking years, okay? We're Americans. Other countries don't care if you're white or you're black or you're left or you're right or whatever it is that you think you are inside of this country. They only care about America. And other countries hate Americans, and you guys are in here destroying your old country, f putting your own selves in danger because you're uneducated and too fucking stupid to understand that the only reason you can say and do the things that you do is because our shit is free mm -hmm. and because of people that are willing to stand up for you. Yeah, uh, that's real shit, man. And, and to your point, too, bro, like, I mean, I think the, the, the terror threat is, is a very legitimate and real thing, man. You, when, you know, this headline reads, the former uh, Hamas leader, Khalid Mashal, calls for day of jihad on friday the 13th that's that's right today while you guys are listening right now this was um he made the statement this past wednesday um and tells muslims to take to the streets and protest against israel um so you got all of this stuff happening man like it's a like we it's a very very uneasy time right now bro this is real easy it's not uneasy gather up all the illegals send them back where the f they came from first off Second off, fix all our problems. Fix our homeless problem. Fix our drug drug problem. Close the fucking border. Fix our economy. Okay? All these things that need fixing need to be fixed before we ever fuck with anything else. If these people want to kill each other over there, they're going to fucking kill each other. Okay? This is not our business. And like I said on the last show, we're being drugged into a forefront war. People don't understand that. Mm -hmm. Ukraine, Taiwan, Israel, and here on our soil. And if that actually happens, that's the end of America. We can't, we can't fight against We don't have that. No. We are not the America of the 1980s. We are not the America of, you know, 2000. We, we, we will lose that, and this country will be over, and your kids will either die or be fucking slaves. Mm -hmm. That's real shit, man. Hey, uh, so, so one last thing I want to bring up, man, that I just thought, Wow. Uh, this headline right here says U.S. announces evacuation flights for Americans. Who oh, you mean how they're going to charge them? Yeah. Is that what you were going to say? Dude, holy shit, man. Yeah. Our own government, who gives away $100 billion to Ukraine, is now telling the Americans that we have in Israel that they are going to have to pay the government back for their evacuation. He's making them sign promissory notes, bro. bro. But here's the thing. MSM won't tell you. that They will not tell you the full fucking picture. So this AP News article, right? And yeah, as you know, talking about, oh, the White House announced that the U.S. government will begin operating evacuation flights to help Americans leave Israel as Israel prepares to escalate retaliatory actions against Hamas militants in the Gaza Strip. Uh, the evacuation flights are expected to begin Friday. White House National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby said 
The U.S. government is arranging for at least four charter flights a day out of Israel, according to people familiar with the planning. Now, they go into it, but here's what they don't mention, bro. They don't mention the fact that the Biden regime is forcing Americans trapped in Israel to sign promissory notes to repay all travel costs if they decide to be rescued by the United States government. Yeah. While they're sending $100 billion to Ukraine and then giving illegal migrants that come across the border 1500 bucks and a fucking cell phone. Yeah. Where, where's the proof, Andy and DJ? Well, how about the email from the actual state.gov, right? Their email, it concludes, departure assistance is provided via a loan from the U.S. government, which requires travelers to sign a promissory note and agreement to repay prior to departure. These people are shitbags, bro. They fucking hate you. They hate you. They hate me. They hate us. And they're doing every single thing they can to fuck us up. Like, until people come to that conclusion, bro, this is not going to change. No. Not and I'll be real, dude. Like, I'm going to be, this is just real shit. Like, I am, I'm to the point now where I'm losing hope that you guys that listen to this show are going to stand up and speak up. I've been doing this for three and a half years now. I've asked you over and over and over again. I've begged you. I've implored you. I have said, stand with me, stand up, speak up, stand up, speak up, get involved, get engaged. We're at the end of the fucking ability to do that. Like the next step is going to be us fighting motherfuckers in the streets because you all wouldn't stand the fuck up. So you better stand up now because this is the last chance we're going to fucking have. And the correct stand up is let's fix our own shit and stop fucking around with these things all over the world. Guys, let us know what you guys think uh, down in the comments using hashtag eyes wide open. Jump in on this conversation. Let us know. Before we get to headline two, man, you want, you want to cruise? You yeah. Want to cruise some comments? It's my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, so a comment, first of all, guys, you guys have been sharing the shit out of the last episode. Engagement's looking great. Okay. Now let me be real about this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they have. And yeah, I appreciate it. But had you done that for the last three years, we wouldn't be in this situation. We would not be here. No. We wouldn't be here. No. We have enough people that listen to this show, okay, every single day across the audio platforms, on YouTube, everywhere, that legitimately had you shared the show for the last three and a half years, we would not fucking be here because the groundswell would be so fucking massive that they couldn't do this kind of shit. Yeah. Okay. So keep going. This is important. And, and, and dude, do you think I really want to do this? Like, bro, I don't think you guys understand. Like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. This is not what I want to do. But I'm willing to do it because it's important. It's if, if you're not going to share the show, stand on your own message. Yeah. Speak up. Stand up. Like, this goes back to what I was saying earlier where you say, oh, you know, love him or hate him, he makes some good points. Bro, why can't you just, like, the whole problem that we have here is, is indicative in that response. Like you're not comfortable enough to stand on what you believe to speak up. And you're not realizing that the silence that you've perpetuated for so many years is what's allowed this to take place. Like we have allowed this because we have been tricked into believing that silence is some sort of virtuous thing. Silent majority, political correctness, don't offend people, right? These things Cancel culture. These things have been in place for you to be quiet. Now is the last chance you are ever going to have to not be quiet. 10 years from now, 20 years from now, you're going to have to look back on this time and say, what did I stand for? Did I do the right thing? Did I stand for the right? And bro, some of you guys are going to be proud. Some of you guys aren't. That's just real shit. There's a lot of you guys been listening to this show for the last fucking three years and haven't shared it one motherfucking time. Mm -hmm. Or you only share it when it's not too offensive. There's nothing offensive about being proud to be an American. There's nothing offensive about standing for America first. There's nothing offensive about standing for the American flag. There's nothing offensive about standing for your community and your neighbors and your friends and your family first. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with you having an opinion or having a stance. They want you to believe there's something wrong with it because the less opinion and the less stance you take, the more freedom they have to operate without any kind of criticism. And we've allowed that for over a decade and look what it's gotten us. So the last chance you have is to speak up and stand up. And whether it's sharing this show or other messages or your own message, it needs to fucking happen. It needs to happen at scale right now. And if it doesn't, we will lose this fucking country. Your kids will fucking be slaves or dead. Real shit. That's real shit, man. Yeah, so let's, let's cruise this, uh, this comment we selected from YouTube uh, by at Techni87. Uh, they say, quote, that's really bold saying that the Jewish are the globalists. Proof? Question mark? Hmm. Yeah. 
So I, I, I chimed back in there, actually. <laughs> I said, uh, World Economic Forum, Hollywood, BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street, Viacom, the list goes on and on. Your play on words is both exposing your own lack of intelligence and why the problem will likely never get solved. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time or crayons to help you there. Well, first of all, what I said was, I didn't say that it was the Jews. I said, actually, what I said was, it wasn't the Jews. What I said was, there's a group of extremely powerful people in which a lot of them happen to be Jewish who then pretend to... Uh, you know, who who then when you point at them and criticize the evil things that they do, they use anti-Semitism as a defense. Right. And so what I'm actually saying is the Jews, the regular Jewish people who are good people, nice people, just like everybody else out here are being used as a shield for potentially a small amount of people doing evil shit. That's actually what I said. Yeah, And we, we've seen this in other places, right? We've seen this with Black Lives Matter. Can't question the, you know, if, if you question the organization, that means you're questioning the state. It means you're racist. And how much money did the Black Lives Matter steal from, from, from communities of black people? Oh, okay. We see the same thing with pedophiles. Yeah, but the point, here's, yeah, bro, it's everybody. It's the, it's, same it's, it's the same play they run everywhere. And here's the problem. This guy here, he's probably a really good dude. He's probably a normal, good-hearted, regular person that has no idea that that's even the case of what's happening. Right. You know what I'm saying? But and so play of words. No, languages. but so when they hear that, because we have to remember, anti-Semitism is like the last one that you can talk like, bro, if you're called a racist, eh, okay. you know, if you're called a bigot, eh, but you're called an anti-Semite. Oh, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like, bro, we have this situation going on where Jewish people are ultra sensitive to any criticism about Jew, any co sort of Jewish person because it's been ingrained into their culture. Yeah. All right. So when you're a Jewish person and you're just a normal person and you hear someone say, well, there's Jewish globalists like Klaus Schwab doing very evil shit. They take that like you're attacking them. Yeah. We're not attacking them. We're attacking those evil people. And that's why the language is so important. And that's why when people say it's the Jews, it's a very negative thing to say because it allows us, we're playing into their plan right. and not able to identify the true criminals. There are good people and there are bad people. There are good Jewish people. There are bad Jewish people. There are good black people. There are bad black people. There are good white people. There are bad white people. And we go down the list. Okay, like, do you really think that Jewish people are the only people without any criminals in their fucking heritage? Yeah. Like, Completely let's be perfect. real. Yes. Completely perfect. Yeah. This is a ridiculous statement. And this is a this is what you said is proving the point. That is proving the point because this is a result of the operation that's been run on this culture. No criticism of any member of this culture can be accepted for any reason whatsoever. And what that has allowed people to do, very evil people, is to operate unimp uh, uh, unimpeded to do whatever the f they want. And so, yeah, there's a lot of proof that the people running the globalist playbook are actual Jews. Just happens to okay? be Okay, yes. But that doesn't mean that all Jewish people are involved in it or even aware of it. Mm -hmm. So, f man, yeah, like, I thought that was important. how about this? How about listen to the show and actually remove your personal bias or your personal feelings from what we're saying? I'll start there. Yeah, that's a good start. No, because actually what we're saying is, bro, Jewish people are being taken advantage of. Right. That's actually what we're saying. Same way we say the LGBT community is being taken advantage And the advantage same of. way that good black people were being manipulated. Exactly. Like, it's, that's what we're saying. That's like, what evil does. No one's, exactly. That's no one's does. saying, oh, you know, it's the, like, they, there's <laughs> people. blacks are criminals. Yes. <laughs> like, dude. <laughs> like, it's such a ridiculous, like, yeah. Like, and dude, we have to Not be able to, we have to be able to talk about it because if we don't talk about it, the problem can't be solved. Right. And because the, the reason they don't want us talking about it is because they know if we don't talk about it, the problem can't be solved. So what do they do the minute that you're able to talk about any of this? Oh, racist. Oh, bigot. Oh, anti-Semite. And then they hope to shut you down. Well, guess what? There's certain people that can't be shut the f*** down. And... It is what it is, man. Yeah, that's real shit, man. If you're a Jewish person and you hear anything I say is is anti-Jewish, you're not listening to what I'm saying. You're missing it. You're I'm not listening to what I'm saying. I'm actually what I'm actually saying is you're being manipulated and taken advantage of by people who are claiming to be good Jewish people who are not. Yeah. It's real you should shit. be happy. You should be like, oh, f bro, I didn't see they were. I didn't see they were manipulating me like that. Right. 
But but this goes back to That's people. A hard thing to admit, though. Bro. No, bro. It goes back to the psychological manipulation of the atrocity propaganda. propaganda yeah. When people make that shit their identity, it becomes really hard for them to separate from. Yeah, it's real shit, man. But guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We appreciate you guys. We see you out there working, so keep doing that. Keep being real ass fans. Uh, so that being said, man, let's keep this show moving. Headline number two. Headline number two reads. Well, before we get to headline number two. Like I said, guys, it's easy to get distracted. There's a lot of other things going on, so we got to address it. Uh, headline number two reads, Biden, I never talked to son Hunter about overseas business dealings. All right, now this is from 2019, okay, um, where uh, former pres- uh, or former vice president Joe Biden said Saturday he hasn't spoken to his son Hunter Biden about his overseas business uh, while forcefully calling again for an investigation into President Donald Trump's July phone call with Ukraine's president. Quote, I have never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings, Biden said. Quote, here's what I know. Trump should be investigated. Uh, Quote, you should be looking at Trump, Biden told reporters in Des uh, Des Moines, Iowa, shortly after arriving at the Polk County Steak Fry, an annual Democratic fundraiser. Quote, he's doing this because he knows I'll beat him like a drum and he's using an abuse of power in every element of the presidency to try to smear me. Ask the right questions. (laughs) Well, here's the thing. Report just came out. Biden allegedly sent 29,000 emails to his son, uh, brother, about their overseas business dealings. <laughs> well, everybody's looking over there. Yeah. Everybody's Not only that, over there. Uh, didn't some charges get dismissed of, against Hunter oh, Biden yeah. as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so let's dive into this. So Joe Biden's continued assertions that never once discussed his son Hunter Biden's foreign business dealings have again been called into question following new bombshell allegations. Uh, A Freedom of Information, or FOIA request, um, obtained through a lawsuit by America First Legal, found that Joe Biden had emailed his son, Hunter, his brother James, and their firms tens of thousands of times while he served as vice president, the Federalist reported. Um, Here's a tweet from America First Legal. Uh, They say, breaking Our FOIA lawsuit against the National Archives has now revealed that then Vice President Biden's office had 19,335 emails with Rosemont Seneca, 4,200 emails with Hunter Biden directly, 1,700 emails with Jim Biden, his brother, um, and 3,700 emails with Jim Lyons Hall Group. Now, this is the actual document. Again, we'll link all of this stuff for you. It clearly states right in this lawsuit that's in open court here's the proof that you guys need it what evidence here's the evidence right um uh, even the oversight committee chimed in on this they tweeted out uh, presidential candidate joe biden promised there would be an quote absolute wall between his work as an elected official and his family's business that doesn't match his track record new information uh, from the National Archives show that Biden's VP office emailed with his son, Hunter, his brother, Jim, and both of their businesses over 29,000 times. And even while all of that is going on, as you alluded to, Andy, uh, this AP News article headline reads, Hunter Biden judge agrees to drop old gun count after indictment replaces scuttled plea deal. But they haven't announced what the new indictment will be. Kept it on the wrap. So, uh, Article reads, a gun count that had been part of a collapsed plea deal uh, in the Hunter Biden case was dismissed Wednesday as a judge signed off on a prosecution request. The order from U.S. District Judge Mary Ellen Noreka formally removes a gun possession charge that has now been replaced by a three count indictment. The president's son is charged with violating measures against drug users having guns when he bought and kept a revolver for about 11 days in 2018, a period where he has acknowledged struggling with addiction. Um, He pleaded not guilty earlier this month as the case moved toward a potential trial with the 2024 election looming. His lawyers have said he did not break the law and they planned to push for dismissal of the indictment. Hunter Biden, 53, was originally expected to plead guilty to misdemeanor tax counts in the agreement with prosecutors and avoid prosecution on a single gun possession charge related to the 2018 purchase if he stayed clean and out of trouble. But that deal um, collapsed in July after Judge Nareka raised questions about it, and the current gun indictment was filed weeks later. No new tax counts have yet been filed by Special Counsel David Weiss. Andy, what do we got on this? 
I mean, I think this is definitely part of the some of the distraction hysteria that's happening, right? Like every time one of these big events takes a shift, they use it as an opportunity to release some of the facts about some of the things that were happening before, but not enough to actually hold them accountable, yeah. right? Like a lot of stuff came out about Fauci, was coming out about Fauci right as Ukraine was announced, yeah. right? Um, Ukraine start, the narrative starting to fall apart with Ukraine narrative uh, in a very obvious way for most people. Uh, and then all of a sudden now it's this new thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it, it's par for the course. You know what I mean? Uh, these people are trying to figure out every way possible to avoid accountability. And in my opinion, I like I've said many times on the show before, I believe that ultimately they will kill everybody on the planet to avoid being held accountable. I think these people are that evil. Yeah. I think they do not care about anything, right? I Like when I look at what happened in Israel and we see, like I see the videos of the hang gliders coming across the border and I think about like how absurd this is knowing that Israel has F-16s, F-18s and all these aircraft and all these military, uh, you know, equipment at their disposal that we've sold them or given them. You know, it, it becomes a pretty absurd observation to think that like some savage people could just like invade the country on with fucking paragliders and come in and just start, you know, doing all this shit. And um, and so like you have to ask the question, you know, if and by the way, this when I'm talking about things, we have to understand there is a difference between the people of Israel and the government of Israel. There's a difference between Palestinians and Hamas. There is a, just like there is a difference here between the American citizens and our government. This do, dichotomy do you, exists. How would you feel if the rest of the world judged us based upon our government and not our people? Which I actually believe a lot of the enemies of our country right now have great empathy and understanding that the majority of the people here in the United States do not support these people. No. They do not support Joe Biden, the majority. And I think that's why we haven't been attacked and why we haven't been nuked by a Russia or something like that, right? I think these people have, you know- Even though there's been countless of reasons why they could do it. It's usually the opposite of what they tell us. And what do they tell us about these people? They're savage, they kill you, they throw people off buildings. Well, if they were that savage, then why haven't they fucking attacked us yet? Right. It's because they know and can can I can idealistically separate the difference between a corrupt government and the people that are in the in 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 the country, right? The yeah. citizens. Yeah. And so when I speak about Israel and and what's going on with between Israel and Palestine, understand that I'm speaking with a difference between Israeli government officials and Israelis and Palestinians and Hamas. You understand? Absolutely. Okay. So when I look at this situation and I observe what I'm looking at and, and I, my, the conclusion I come to is that it was allowed to happen. And by the way, there's a whole bunch of IDF agents from Israel that have also come out publicly already and said this was allowed to happen. Yeah. All right. So if they allowed these paragliders to come in from Hamas and kill all these people, why did they do that? Why would they do that? Well, it's because they could fucking then push an agenda that they were trying to push, which is the extermination of Palestinians. All right, let's be real here. While also protecting the and defense mechanism that they have. Correct, and unifying all the Palestinian or all the Israelis behind a uh, 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 common enemy. Uh, uh, no, an official that just two weeks ago they fucking a lot of them hated. All right, so we have to be honest about like what we're seeing going on here, and this is not a criticism of Israelis. This is a criticism of their leadership and, 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 and our leadership and the government's, you, know, you understand? Absolutely. So when we look at what's happening and, and we look at the response of this attack being allowed, like, let, okay, we allowed, we allowed these people come in to kill a thousand of our people. That's fucking horrible. But what did it do? It united them and now they're able to go over to uh, the rest of Palestine and fucking genocide an entire like dude these people are are in a in a frenzy right yeah. because the propagation that they've had has been like babies heads cut off you know and all this ridiculous horrible shit some of it true some of it exaggerated uh but this is no different than what we had in 911 where we we had intelligence 
we ha- and some will say that our own three letter agencies were heavily involved in planning this out. Some say, okay, right. <laughs> some say it was Israel, right? So like, bro, there's there's these. There, and the, and by the way, that's not just like conspiracy theory. There's plenty of mainstream people that will tell you that 9-11 was an inside job. Yep. And if we look at 9-11 and then what happened right after 9-11, which was the unequivocal support for the United States of America to do whatever they needed to do, we were allowed to go over into Iraq and Afghanistan and do whatever the f*** we wanted for 20 years, which made Raytheon and General Dynamics and all, all these companies billions of dollars and by the way who are those companies donating to oh they're donating their money to the political campaigns of the people making these decisions and they're all getting rich off of the death and slaughter of the citizens of the world this is not the the governments of the world most of them are so corrupt at this point that they are willing to kill all of us to continue to play these games yep. and it's, it's very dangerous dude and so what i observe what's happening in israel is not like you know, what most people are talking about. Like they're not talking, like mo- most people are talking about Hamas is some savages, they, and they might be. And they came in and they did this and, and it looks like they did some bad shit, right? Real bad shit, they killed a lot of people. But if they were allowed to do it, that, that and then that justifies more killing of innocent civilians, okay? So that's what it appears to look like for me. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. So I don't support any of these groups. I think they're all fucking shit. But at the end of the day, bro, good people, men and women, whether they're Jewish or Palestinian or American or fucking whatever, are dying at the expense of these world leaders who are guilty of crimes against humanity a bunch of different times. And every time we get close to holding them accountable, they pop up something else. Yeah. So that's the that's the dangerous thing, right? So like we've always talked about this. Uh, there's like this lag, right, between the narrative coming out and then the push for accountability. There's this lag in between those two things, right? And it's like, you know, we've noticed it. We've said this plenty of times. You know, every time we get close to that accountability, bam, something else happens. So when you when you have this this constant barrage of narratives and propaganda being pushed and these distractions that keep coming up, right, you take the the physical pains that we're feeling right now as Americans, right? Our grocery bills, gas bills, right? You take all of these things. There's only a matter of time from when that lag between those two things gets hours, right? Between, oh, okay, that's definitely bullshit. Here's accountability, right? That they have to transition from this being this like mental, uh, you know, psychological war to an actual physical, like real true physical harm. And I think we are extremely close to that, man, because people are getting it too quickly now. Yeah, they're getting caught within Way hours. too quickly. Where, where it took COVID a year for people to catch two on. Two years, really. It took Black Lives... <laughs> well, yeah, okay, two years. Took Black Lives Matter a year. Took Ukraine a f***ing six months. They just yep. kept doing it. Yep. Now people are calling this shit bullshit... In days. In days. And so the next thing is actual destruction and death. And guess who they want to go fight for this? You mm-hmm. and me. And our f***ing kids. Yeah. And that ain't happening, dude. No, man. No. Yeah, Guys, jump in on this conversation. Let us know what you guys think. Down in the comments using hashtag Abrica anyway. And let us know what you think. They're going to force us into a... And, and like, when I say, I truly... The lag's be- getting too small, Listen, man. dude. I truly believe that if America gets involved in this war, we will have fighting in the streets here in this country in the next f***ing 12... Shit we've never seen before. Never had to even think about. Yeah. All because of the useful idiots. Didn't like someone's tweets. Couldn't, couldn't, couldn't read the science on a mask or a vaccine or understand what was happening. Like, bro, the, you guys are way too emotional. You're, you're emotionally manipulated way too easy. I've seen tons of my friends fall for this again. Like, it's like a real world perception and IQ test happening in real time. Yeah. Like, now I can clearly see, okay, well... This is why this person struggles in life because they Makes do not. Sense. Yeah, because they do not have the ability to perceive when they are being manipulated at all. And it doesn't matter if it happens one time, three times, five times. They ne- they can never catch it. And if you don't have that level of intelligence or perception, you can't be successful in the world. You're going to struggle at your work. You're going to struggle with your life. You're going to struggle everywhere. Like to me, w- when I observe these things, it- it's pretty clear quickly what's happening. And, and then, you know, and then I go on the podcast like the other day and I say it and, you know, we got people 
calling all kinds of names and saying all this kind of shit, bro. I'm sorry that you don't see it. I, I don't know what to tell you. I got enough crazy. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, I'm sorry you don't see it. Like, but you should start listening to people who are seeing it because it's going to end up costing us everything. Yeah. It's going to cost us this country and probably our lives. I mean, dude, can you imagine like, like, like there could legitimately be like fighting here in the streets, fighting soon, very soon. Very soon, man. It's a real thing. Very real thing, man. Guys, let's get into our last headline. Third and final headline of the day. Headline number three. Headline number three reads. Philadelphia journalist, former city comms director, shot and killed in his home. You see this, right? Everybody, I mean, this has been circulating. But it's not. There's been some developments on this I thought were pretty interesting. So let's dive into this. Uh, so this article from the Daily Wire, this was written on October 3rd, 2023. And initially, this kind of came out as like, oh, you know, this far progressive left, you know, activist, writer, journalist gets killed by the very people he is an activist for. That's mm -hmm. initially how it came out. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so this initial story, a Philadelphia journalist who previously worked for the city government was shot and killed in his home early Monday morning. Josh Kruger, 39, this guy, was shot seven times around 1.30 a.m. at his home in the Point Breeze neighborhood of the city. Kruger's neighbor, Jazz Brown, heard the gunshots, followed by Kruger calling for help, CBS News reported. Quote, Josh was calling for help, and I called the police to make sure they'd come out for them, Brown said. The journalist was rushed to Penn Presbyterian Medical Center, where he died less than an hour later, according to the Philadelphia Inquirer. Uh, police said they believe someone entered Kruger's home and shot him at the base of his stairs before fleeing. Authorities have yet to make an arrest or recover a weapon as they review surveillance footage from outside the row house uh, where Kruger was murdered. Uh, detectives believe the shooting stemmed from either a drug-related or domestic dispute. Law enforcement sources told the Inquirer. Uh, the sources also said that investigators found methamphetamine in Kruger's bedroom and recovered troubling text messages between Kruger and a former partner. Now, there's been some updates. This headline reads, also from Daily Mail, uh, I'm sorry, Daily Wire, leftist journalists had years-long sexual relationship with teen accused of killing him, threatened to post explicit photos, teen's family says. Yeah, we'll just let So he's a fucking pedophile. 100%. Ding, ding, ding. 10 points for Andy. <laughs> yeah, so a Philadelphia Why journalist. are these people all fucking pedophiles, bro? Like, have we not understand that pedophiles have, like, legitimately infiltrated the far-left sect of our political spectrum? Can we just call that a spade? Bro, it's what it is. Like, and we're over here bending to these people and being afraid they're going to call us f***ing names? F*** these people, bro. Like, they're out here trying to f*** your children. Teach your children to cut off their own dicks and shit, and you guys are afraid they're going to call you a couple f***ing names. And then we're here. The world's falling apart because you're afraid of it. Bro. Yeah, so so this updated article. So a Philadelphia journalist and former Democratic Communications director who was shot and killed in his home earlier this month was in a years long sexual relationship with the teenager accused of killing him. The teen's family said the family of Robert Davis. OK, this gentleman right here. OK, Robert Davis. He's 19 years old. Uh, the 19-year-old accused of murdering leftist journalist Josh Kruger said that Kruger began the relationship with Davis when Davis was just 15 years old. Now, how old was Kruger? Kruger was 39. Davis. Okay. So he's 19 to so four years ago? So yeah. 30, 34? Yeah. 34-year-old man in a sexual relationship with a, with a 15-year-old. Okay. Um and this has all been recorded to the Philadelphia Inquirer. The relationship centered on sex and drugs, according to Davis's family. And Kruger, 39, allegedly threatened to post sexually explicit photos of the teen in the past. Probably not a very good move. Kruger Looks was like that threat cost you, bro. Yeah. Kruger was shot as it should. seven times, man. As it should. Yeah. So Davis's mother and should have shot him fucking 20 times. Yeah. Davis's mother and brother told the Inquirer that the teen was involved in a relationship with Kruger as a minor, and he tried to keep the relationship, along with his drug addiction, secret. Surveillance footage from the area near Kruger's home and tips from the journalist's friends and family led police to Davis. 
and they issued a, a warrant for his arrest. Police said Kruger, quote, was trying to help Davis get through life. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you was. Yeah. Now, here's something that's interesting. So, you know, of course, everything's on the Internet. You can find it. Let's go to Josh Kruger's Twitter. Okay, let's see some of his old tweets. This one, Yeah, let's read this one. Yeah. It's a tiresome and incredibly outdated bigoted trope to claim all gay men are pedophiles. Also, if I've seen any seen any consistent thing with the modern American right, it's that anything they accuse you of, they're actually guilty of themselves. As this fucking guy is fucking children calling people like us a fucking pedophile. Holy shit, dude. Or when are you guys going to wake up? These are fucking shitbag human beings, bro. You guys defend them like they're victim class. We Like, bro, when are we going to wake the fuck up? People are now using gays as a scapegoat for sexual abuse, saying homosexual amorality is responsible. Nope. The lie that gay men are all pedophiles or pederasts is one of the most vile, literally dangerous slur slurs homophobes use. It was a lie a hundred years ago, and it's a lie today. Clearly not. Yeah, not all gays are pedophiles. Well, that's true. But this one definitely was. Uh, okay. <laughs> like This pedophile. This is the guy infiltrating the gay community that we talk about all the time. That they could protect. Look at him. He looks like a regular dude. Bro. Keep going. We got another one here. Yeah, this last one. Uh, I'll read this one. The centuries-old smear that gay men are pedophiles is getting new life thanks to coordination between far-right news sites and far-right message boards. This egregious defamation is part of a strategy to target LGBTQ people with violence. No. We don't care if you're gay. We don't care if you're a grown man and you want to have sex with another grown man. We do not care. What we care about is how you show up at our schools and put books in front of little kids' faces talking about sucking dicks, okay, and being okay to be whatever and cut off their penises and alter their gender ideology and take irreversible hormones. You, bro, can rot in hell. I think he will. Yeah. I think I think he will. Let me ask you this, though, right? So what what do you think? The kid shouldn't fucking face any punishment whatsoever, bro. He was sexually abused. He was sexually manipulated by an adult. He fucking was threatened to expose and ruin his whole life. Bro, you can't hold this person responsible for this fucking level of psychological manipulation. No. Like, it's sad. You're talking this about trauma. Kid, this kid, trauma. exactly. This is real. You fucking have trauma because someone said something mean to you. No. That's trauma, being manipulated into doing whatever the f they were doing and then being threatened to keep Bro. doing it uh, or I'm going to show pictures and ruin your life. He's, to me, this kid's well, this a, guy's fucking, a piece of shit. Yeah, uh, to me, this kid's a hero. I'm glad he fucking, like, I mean. Yeah. Dude, I feel bad for him. Now he's going to have to go through his whole life with this shit on his back. I'm sick of this shit, dude. Yeah. I'm sick of this shit. The gay community needs to stand the fuck up against their own fucking pedophile problem. That's yeah. a real thing. I know there's gays against groomers, but there's still a whole bunch that aren't doing it. That's real that, shit. Those are the people Hamas wants to kill, by the way. Mm -hmm. Just so we're clear. Oh, they, they will. <laughs> they absolutely will. Guys, jump in on this conversation. Let us know what you guys think down in the comments. Hashtag pedophiles. Let us know. Uh, let us know what you guys think. Bro, and and what not only are those the people Hamas wants to kill, those are also the people parading around celebrating the deaths of innocent Israeli people. Like, think about this. Like, think about this. You have people who are le legitimately hated by this terrorist group who are parading around celebrating the death of innocent women and children. Whether it was orchestrated by their own government or not is irrelevant. These are innocent fucking human beings. And then we have disgustingly, like, all these people who are like, fuck them, kill them all, let them have it, give them hell, blah, blah, blah. Not discerning that, you know, like, bro, how are you going to run an airstrike 500 airstrikes against a terror organization 
and not kill all the civilians too. Like, bro, these this is a this is a this is an orchestrated wiping out of an entire culture. It's only going to lead to more death. Oh yeah. It's only going to lead to more death. Like, dude, this is only going to lead to more. Like, there's how how many million Jewish people are there compared to how many million fucking Muslim people? There's one point five billion. Okay, Muslim. and how many Jewish people? All right, sit in Earth. 16.1 million people on the earth, okay, are Jewish. Now, you're, these people the, the, have created this scenario now where Israel's going to roll in and destroy a whole bunch of fucking Muslim people, Palestine or not, Palestinians or not, okay, innocent or not. They're not just targeting Hamas. They're targeting everyone right now. How do you think that's going to work out long term when you have 1.5 billion Muslims who are going to watch this group of people exterminate this other group of people, and then the other group of people have, you know, their cousins and their friends, people who may not be associated with them, watching them do it. And there's literally 1.5 billion to 14 million. How do you think this is going to work out? This is going to cause major problems. Nobody should be supporting this conflict whatsoever. By the way. way. Right. Because it's going to get everybody in a fucking world war and get potentially your children killed because of it. So, like, you guys should think before you stand up and say, you know, this or that or this or this or this and stop being emotionally, like, stupid. Like, you're you're being a pawn in their game. Do you think they don't know when they run a fake headline about babies having their fucking heads cut off that they don't know what the reaction is going to be? They know. They know it's going to whip everybody into a frenzy to say, fucking get them, bro. This happened to me. Okay. I know what this is like. When 9-11 happened, all right, I was like, fuck it. Let's kill them all. Let's fucking kill them all. Okay. Because it was so disturbing to watch that like. It was just the way I felt, okay? But after watching for the last 20-something years, right, I started to realize that I was wrong in that assessment, completely wrong, because just because a few evil people of a culture decided to do this evil thing does not justify the killing of millions of fucking innocents. Like, this, we're talking about humanity, bro. We're not talking about, like, we're talking, like... We're talking about human beings. We're not talking about a flag. We're not talking about a country. We're not talking about a religion. We're talking about like what's right and what's wrong fundamentally. Like it's not right. None of this shit is right and it's not okay. And it's not human nature to do these things to each other. Like they convince us, oh, that's just how humans are. No, it's not. There's evil people that manipulate us into these atrocious actions that kill millions of people every single year all over the world for the benefit of a very small group of elite people like bro that's not okay and i don't like it, it's it's super hard to like witness all of this yeah you know what i mean Seeing like it for what it is yeah. yeah like this is disgusting we have these elite rich powerful people manipulating the peasants to kill each other for shit that isn't even fucking true. And getting us to celebrate it. And no, getting us to celebrate and then them making trillions of dollars off of it. Dude, we have to get smarter, dude. Yep. Like people have to wake up. Like this is not, this is, yes, I'm for America first, but this is a human species problem. And the cool thing is, the, the silver lining of all of this is that we living at this time have the opportunity to make a difference. Like not many people that, that have lived on, on earth have actually had the real opportunity to make a difference with their time here. And we have the opportunity with our words, with our thoughts, with our action, with our compassion, with the way we live our lives to legitimately change the history of humanity. And if we don't, humans are going to lose. They're going to replace us with robots and AI and can kill the rest of us, depopulate the planet. Like when they get on stage and they talk about depopulation, do you think they're talking about them? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. They're talking about us. Yeah, they're not volunteering themselves as tribute, bro. Correct. Like, and we, we like stand with some of these people, like with Fauci and Bill Gates and these other people. What the fuck are you guys doing? 
Like you guys, you guys say, oh, AI is a great thing. Do you not understand that this is all part? Like, bro, I feel. I don't think we're going to make it, dude. You know, I, I don't, I don't, pe people are too afraid. Yeah. Like. Too the, easily manipulated. No, it's not only that they're too easily manipulated. It's that they won't stand and share a message at all. Like, yeah. like. After coming to terms and being presented with the facts. Yeah. It's still hard for them to, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Dude, it's, fucking, it's disturbing, bro. It like legit keeps me up at night. You know, I don't come in, I, you, <laughs> unlike most of these podcasters and these talking heads and these internet personalities, this is not how I make my money, guys. I'm not selling fucking gear and fucking, you know, shirts that say I stand with this every single time something happens. You know, I'm, I don't even post on the fucking internet outside my show. You know, like I run real businesses in real life, like... <clears throat> I don't know, man. Yeah, we'll see. It's man. it's it's really it's really frustrating for me to watch this happen and then to see people have no humanity in their hearts about like any of it. It's just it it, it honestly it disgusts me. Like we won't make it if things don't change. No. no and I'm not talking about we America. I mean we human beings like we're to the point now where we're being manipulated to the point of literal self-destruction for, for for what and for whom mm -hmm. do you think these people and do you think joe biden gives a fuck about the american people bro no okay do you think any of these people do they don't care yeah and when when or the world when the world the things they say they care about like, where, where's climate change bro, when, when the these... world starts closing in on them they kill a whole bunch of us to distract the fucking attention off of them. Yep. Like, like, like this, like, like it's. Yeah. Like it ain't nothing, bro. It's, it's like spraying nothing. raid on some cockroaches. Yep. Hey, we got, let's, let's kill. Well, they're crawling too far. Yeah. Kill them. They'll get upset. They'll forget about we're even here. Mm-hmm. It also sends a signal to everybody else to stay away from that shit. Yeah. We'll see, man. Guys, let's finish this out. We got a final segment of the show. As always, thumbs up. We're dumb as f This is where we bring a headline in. We talk about it. It'll get one of those two options. Um, so with that being said, a thumbs up or dumb as f headline reads. Talk about distractions. Bigfoot spotted in Colorado in broad daylight. And it's all on camera. We're convinced. Well, speaking of speaking of Bigfoot, did you see that did you see what I did it for Dylan? No. I saved him from that twenty foot anaconda. <laughs> <laughs> did you see that yeah, i saw that yeah yeah if you didn't see the footage you can go over there right here if you're on youtube and yeah. go to youtube shorts click this right here yeah go over there check out the youtube shorts you'll see a video of me saving our videographer and good buddy dylan from a 20-foot anaconda yeah save his fucking life bro can you you think you would say would, would you save us from bigfoot how do you save us from bigfoot i don't know i have to think about it <laughs> dude they got it on video like this is I mean, we've all seen those grainy clips from like the 1970s or whatever. This is a little different. This is a little different. So let's dive into this. So this is a New York Post article reading. Well, we know it's bullshit then. Yeah. He was popping a Sasquatch. A couple on a romantic break in Colorado claims to have captured the mythical creature, Bigfoot, on camera, wandering on the side of a mountain before sitting down to rest, all in broad daylight. Uh, professed eyewitnesses Shannon and Stetson Parker, uh, enjoying a trip for their 10th wedding anniversary, claim to have observed the legendary Lummox while enjoying a sightseeing tour on the narrow gauge rail line between Durango and Silverton in the Centennial State's far southwest. Quote, we were looking for elk in the mountains and my husband sees something moving and they can't really explain it. So he's like Bigfoot. Shannon, a 44-year-old contractor from Cheyenne, Wyoming, told the Post, uh, quote, it was at least six, seven feet or taller. Um, it matched the sage in the mountains so much that it's like he's camouflaged when crouching down. If you, uh, if you asked before the trip, we would have said maybe Bigfoot could be real, but now 
were convinced. So Shannon, who shared the video of the odd one to two minute sighting in a Facebook post, also said that the train's conductor told the couple of a similar previous non-human sightings. Quote, he said that he went out snow hoeing. Snowshoeing. Oh, it's not snow hoeing? No. Snow hoeing? No. I snow. thought that was like some like a new term. I was like, yeah, snow hoeing, <laughs> snow snow hoeing. That's what they do down there. In the, that's what they Wait, do down there in the hood when it snows. Yeah, snow hoeing. Yeah, this is yeah. it, baby. They still on like on them corners. Baby. Hey, <laughs> got to make those nickels, bro. <laughs> so what? What is snowshoeing? What is that then? You never seen snowshoes? Snowshoes. That's an actual activity. Like people huh? just do that shit. That's actual. Snow, like- snowshoes are like those tennis big- rackets. Yes. Yeah. That's snowshoes. So like people but snowshoeing. Yeah, you go out and walk on the snow like as exercise or a hike or whatever. Why? Well, that's what they do, man. In <laughs> Colorado, bro, they're all eating <laughs> granola. They can go hey, out in the bro, woods. Go snowshoeing. They drink fucking beer that tastes shitty. Pretend that it's good. Yeah. They lecture you on politics and they go snow hoeing. Yeah, I got my new oatmeal wheat yeah. IPA. You want to go snowshoeing? Yeah, that's right. What the fuck yeah. is that? Hey, would you like some of my oatmeal stout? And they all look exactly the same. Like, bro, I love Colorado, <laughs> but let's be real. I'm being, I'm being honest. Smoking like, uh, native. What's, it's that, all, what's it's, that cigarette? Native American cigarettes. Yeah, thing? whatever, dude. It's American all spirits. There yes, American spirits, bro. <laughs> and then they got to they, they lecture you on politics, man. You know what I'm saying? Even though they never had a fucking job, ever. These snow- you know, they come from a rich family who fucking funded their new resettlement in Colorado. They wear yeah. all fucking North Face and Patagonia. Everything's up. We all know what the fuck I'm talking about. You guys yeah. can laugh at me all you want. I actually love these people <laughs> because they're fun and they smoke a lot of weed yeah. and they go on adventures I don't know shit about, but I, I could do without the lectures on the politics and this bullshit environment shit that you guys yeah. talk about. But you go snowshoeing. I, 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 I go snow hoeing. <laughs> snow hoeing. Okay. Like... <laughs> They're upcycled, bro. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm shredding the gnar. Yeah, right. Okay, so we got that clarified. All right. Yeah. So uh, they said, quote, he went. He said that he went out snowshoeing in those mountains before, and he had seen footprints that were larger and of much bigger stride than snowshoes would have been, Parker said. Quote, he has seen unexplainable things as well. Uh, some took the couple's Bigfoot claims in stride. One commented, quote, I believe on Shannon's post with another one saying, love it. Uh, though not everyone is uh, convinced uh, that Chewbacca's doppelganger exists. Quote, and what were y'all thinking? Another comment. No, he says, and what were y'all drinking? We already oh. we'd established what they're drinking. Yeah, stout. They're drinking oatmeal, oatmeal stout. stout. Yeah. <laughs> and and it tastes like shit, but they're going to tell you how great it is. <laughs> this, <laughs> he look. Mm-hmm. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, you guys are such liars. They are uh, such liars, dude. It's so good. It's upcycled, too. <laughs> <laughs> bro. All right, so let's let check out the video. Yeah. Let's check out the video. This is the video of Sasquatch in Colorado. Here it is. It's an elusive creature. All right, just squat it down. Taking the yeah. shit. Yeah, bro. Let me see your camera. I'll do it. That's a dude in a Chewbacca suit. Snowshoe? He's snow hoeing. He's snow, snow hoeing. Yeah, I, listen, man. That's a big dude. That looks like a dude in a ghillie suit. You know who that is? That's Big Kev, bro. Big Kev's out <laughs> in Colorado, and he's wearing his ghillie suit, yeah. and he's pulling pranks on these people. Yeah. Look at his face. He's laughing. Yeah, I don't know, man. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Kev, why you gotta be f***ing with these people, bro? You got your first week in Colorado, you're out here f***ing with these people? I, 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 you, I mean, do you believe in, you believe that shit like this exists? Shit like what? Like snow hose? No, Stasswatch. Stasswatch. I've been skiing, I've, been, I've seen lots of snow hose at the ski, ski slopes. Really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. I mean... It, I don't know. I think people Bro, see what they want to see. Let's go Sasquatch hunting, huh? Let's go hunting Sasquatch. Why? Just, just because. But I'll it, do this shit because you no, can shoot. No, because we're gonna be walking around the woods and there's gonna be nothing to see. How do you know? I'll do this. I won't go like ghost chasing. Bro, last time I went to Colorado might be the last time I went to Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What happened? Because I went there, and and I stayed at this place in fucking Breckenridge, bro. And like, dude, I drink a lot of water. Like I drink at least a gallon of water every day. And yeah. shockingly, I don't die, right? <laughs> According to New York Post. But 
like I, I stayed at this restaurant or I mean at this hotel. Um, I forgot what it was called. If I could remember, I'd say what it was, but it fucking sucked. And dude, they had no bottled water. No, you. they hand you a cup. Mm-hmm. Now this place is like $1,000 a night minimum to stay there, right? Yeah. And they, they give you a fucking cup and they say, you know, drink the water out of these, like out of the tap or out of these coolers. And it's like, dude, I just want some fucking bottled water. Can I got, get a bottle of water? We don't do bottled water here. What do you mean you don't do bottled water? It's for the environment. Yeah, we upcycle. So, like, bro, that was it. Like, you guys aren't going to have fucking water. I'm not coming. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hey, listen. It's, I guess. They looked at me like I was insane. Like, I just wanted a ca- I want some waters, you man. You should have asked him for a straw. <laughs> I, can't, I can't walk down the street with my cup of water, bro. Yeah. Like, no. I'm, I'm talking about I need some water. Yeah. So, they didn't like that. 16 point yeah, Dude, they didn't like it. I wrote them an email, and they got all pissed off, and, like, we went back and forth, and I can't remember the name, or I would tell you, but... It was right there on the corner of Main Street. It started with a G, mm. but I can't remember the name of it. Right at the base of the mountain. They were fucking assholes. <laughs> they're, they're lucky I can't remember the name of their fucking place right now. Yeah, yeah. It might be part two. Not so, only that, we rented the whole hotel. We had the whole oh, hotel rented. They got, they got water there. Yeah, we had the whole, we had our whole, we had fucking 100 people there from the company, and they're giving me shit when I'm paying the bill about getting some motherfucking bottled water. No, oh, they got bottled water there. I know they had it. They were, dude, it was the same people I described a minute ago. Mm-hmm. You know, they're. Yep. Anyway. Yeah. Yep. So what are we giving this, man? This is thumbs up and thumbs. I mean. It's pretty cool. I mean, I don't, I'm kind of convinced. Are you? I'm kind of convinced. So you're dumb as fuck. Well, I mean, listen. I don't know. Like that was a trophy. Yeah. Oh, that was, that's a trophy, my dot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, is that a, is that a, that's a fucking I don't know. This shit it? looks like a dude in hunting gear to me, man. Yeah. Like this shit doesn't look real. Like it looks like a dude who's. I mean, it looks like a guy. He looks like the one dude from the Bee Gees. I don't know right what he looks like. It looks like Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah. You seen that? Nope. Yeah. Yeah, Harry, Harry and the Hendersons. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Nope. Wasn't there a fucking show based on that too? I know there was a movie, but there was a show, too, I think. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, I don't really care. <laughs> um, but what I do care about is, like, you know, you guys waking up and speaking up and standing up and, and and not being so quick to make judgments on things and understanding that you're being propagated and played and manipulated to have a certain reaction. I wish you all would just stop and pause for a second and say, what's actually happening here? and Why do I feel emotionally upset? And what is the cause of that? And why are they doing that? We've talked about this for many years on the show, right? When they propagate us with, you know, visuals that are very disturbing, you know, there's a reason they're doing that. And it's not because they're doing it for our benefit. They're doing it for their benefit. So what reaction are they looking for? And what reaction are we giving them? And right now, the reaction that they're looking for is an enraged society that stands with one government that could potentially be very corrupt and slaughtering innocent people off the face of the earth. And that's what they're getting you to try and get behind, which is going to lead, by the way, to a massive retaliation by the entire Arab population of the fucking world, which, by the way, uh, they're the biggest. Okay, so like, I don't think people understand what's actually happening here, you know, and and it's it still blows my mind to sit here and think about how the progressive lefties and the squad and all these people are like over here saying, I stand with Hamas. All right. When Hamas wants to kill you. Right. With like I, pleasure in doing. So. No, 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 bro. That's what they exist to do. Okay. And I'm not saying I stand with the Israeli government because I don't, I stand with the innocent people of Israel. I stand with the innocent people of Palestine, but most of all, I stand with the innocent people of the United States of America and we're being played and used as, as we have been for many, many years to be the enforcement uh, piece for all of these things going on in the world. And that needs to end. We're suffering here. We have 27,000 murders a year in the inner cities. We have a hundred thousand plus drug overdoses. We have a uh, hundred thousand plus kids trafficked. We have kids being manipulated into permanently ruining their lives by having sexual mutilation surgeries and hormone uh, therapy that, that permanently fucks them up. We have uh, an economy that's in the shitter. We have a president's been proven to take money from other countries. We, we have, we have, we have, we have, we have, we have, we have. Okay. 
And we are not the America of 20 years ago or 30 years ago where we're this big superpower force. We're stretched thin and our military is undermanned and we don't have the equipment and we don't have the oil and we don't have shit. And we're being frenzied into a forefront altercation. Russia, Taiwan, Middle East, and at home potentially. Okay, how do you think that's going to end up for you? Do you, who, do you understand that when you root for this, there's nobody else coming to fight this for you. It's going to be you. And unfortunately, the people calling for reasonable thought and common sense, like me and you and some other people, are being villainized by the right and the left for not wanting to partake in this because we understand what it's going to cause. And the, the ironic thing is, is when these things happen, we are the very people that are going to be expected to fight. Like, dude, it's just fucked up, man. Yeah, it is, man. <clears throat> it is, man. We have to get smarter. And you guys have to get bolder. You know, don't share my show if you don't want to share it. This isn't about me. But, like, I have no problem saying what I believe to be true. Clearly, I say it in front of the entire world every day, and I have for years. Very few people do that. Okay, so if you don't want to share my shit, take it upon yourself to share your own shit. Or somebody else's shit who's actually fucking standing up for the truth. But figure out that you have to stand up and speak up and be about it and be the change. And you cannot apologize for this. You cannot continue to apologize and say, oh, well, you know, you make some good points. No, motherfucker, you agree with everything this person says. You're just afraid to say it. Until people recognize that you are no longer afraid, they will continue to manipulate you and push you and make you feel a prisoner in your own life. This is the time to stand up. This is the time to be bold. This is the time. And by the way, we may not get another time. And that's not alarmist. That's alarmist was, you know, four years ago when I was telling you this. Right. Now we're at the breaking point. And this is real shit with real consequences. And you're going to have to ask yourself, am I standing for the right thing? Am I being true to myself? Am I going to be proud of what I did during these times? Because these times are historic. These times are historic to the human race. And if we lose in these times, the human race is fucking finished forever because we are in this key pivotal position where we can be replaced by working robots and artificial intelligence and the elite people of society can run that without any of us for thousands of years they've needed us because they needed farming and they needed industry and they needed things produced they do not need that anymore which is why they're talking about depopulation and a lot of you guys think they're talking about depopulation because of the environment that's just the catch that's just the the atrocity propaganda so to speak that's getting you to say this really matters. They're using your own goodwill and your own good heart against you over and over and over again. And until you wake up to that, we will continue to go down this path. And if we continue to go down this path, there isn't much more runway on this side of the path that doesn't include massive death and destruction for everybody that you know, including me, including you, including your fucking kids. So think about what you stand for and think about how courage, courageous you actually are. Because the reality is, is if we don't find it and we don't find that backbone soon, we are finished.